Amen. Amen. You may have your seats. Yes. I'm the speaker this morning, and I'm going to do th th three things. I'm going to sing a song. I'm going to cry. And I'm going to preach. I'll sing a song without the instruments. Because it was before the instruments. When I see fear. In a little while, my Lord will come for me. In a little while, his blessed face I see. In a little while, when I speak him for my life, I leave him say to me. My child will die in a little while. My Lord will come for me in a little while. His blessed face I see in a little while. When I speak him for my life, only a him said to me. My child will die. Oh, what a joy to be when he comes to the clouds of growth. Together we'll sing redemption stories. Oh, what a joy of rejoicing that we be. No more headaches, no more fears, no more sadness, no more pain. Sin a little while, my Lord will come in a little while, my Lord will come. I'm waiting for my Lord, returning to the earth again. I know he will come in a little while. He may come morning, no, no, night. He may not know, but I know he will come in a little while. I'm waiting for my Lord returning to the earth again. I know he will come in a little while. He may come morning, no, no, night. We may not know, but I know he will come in a little while. Oh, what a joy it will be when it comes to the clouds of glory. Together we'll sing redemption stories. Oh, what a joy of rejoicing that we be. No more headaches, no more fears, no more sadness, no more pain. Sin a little while. My Lord will come in a little while. My Lord will come in a little while. My Savior will come for me in a little while. My wholeness I see Jesus in a little while. When I speak him for my love, only I am to me, my child will die in a little while. My Savior will come for me in a little while. My wholeness, I see Jesus in a little while. When I speak him for my life, only I him say to me, my child will die. Oh, what a joy it will be when he comes to the clouds of growth. Together we'll sing redemption stories. Oh, what a joy of rejoicing that we be. No more 
headaches, no more fears, no more sadness, no more pains in a little while. I Lord will come in a little while. My Lord will come in a little while. My Lord will come. Amen. I've done two things. Yes. I have sung and I've cried. One has fear. Now I want to preach. Yes, my sermon this morning, the title is Live Within Boundaries. We live within boundaries. And our key verse is from Second Samuel. Please give us from the New Living Translation. Media team. Second Samuel 15. 1 to 12. New Living Translation. After this, Absalom bought a chariot and horses, and he had 50 bodyguards to run ahead of him. Verse 2. He got up early every morning and went out to the gate of the city. When people bought a case, sorry, brought a case to the king for judgment, Absalom would ask, where in Israel? They were from, and they would tell him their tribe. Verse 3. Then Absalom would say, You've really got a strong case here. It's too hard. It's so bad the king doesn't have anyone to hear it. Verse 4. I wish I were the judge. Then everyone would bring their cases to me for judgment, and I would give them justice. Verse 5. When people tried to bow before him, Absalom would let them, wouldn't let them. Instead, he would, instead he took them by the hand and embraced them. Verse 6, Absalom did this with everyone who came to the king for judgment. And so he stole the hearts of all the people of Israel. Verse 7, after four years, Absalom said to the king, let me go to Hebron to offer a sacrifice to the king, to the Lord, and to fulfill a vow I made to him. Verse 8, for while your servant was at Geshu in Aram, I promised to sacrifice to the Lord in Hebron if he would bring me back to Jerusalem. Verse 9, all right, the king told him, go and fulfill your vow. So Absalom went to Hebron. Verse 10, but while he was there, he sent secret messengers to all the tribes of Israel to start up a rebellion against the king. As soon as you hear the ram's horn, his message read, you are to say, Absalom has been crowned king in Hebron. Verse 11, he took 200 men from Jerusalem with him as guests, but they knew nothing of his intentions. Verse 12, while Absalom was offering the sacrifices, he sent for Ahithophel, one of David's counselors who lived in Gilo. Soon, many others also joined Absalom, and this conspiracy gained momentum. You can continue and continue and continue. You know, people love to be listened, and this is what made Absalom win the hearts of the people of Israel. People need somebody who can listen to them. People need somebody <clears throat> who can help them. You listen to them, and then you help them. And Absalom forgot that David was not only a king, but David was appointed and anointed. Friends, you can never fight the anointing of the Lord. You can never fight the anointing of the Lord. Absalom for God. The God did this was his father. David was anointed and he was appointed. In the book of 1 Chronicles 1622, the Bible says that, touch not to mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. To Absalom, 
he saw his father. But before God, this was a king. And Absalom thought he can sabotage the, the, the kingdom of his father or the reign of his father. Not forget that these are the same people that had appointed, an anoint, had appointed David. And Absalom thought, me as a king, I can do better than my father. My friend, that's a lie. You can never do better than the anointed of the Lord. Absalom had empty words and empty promises that nobody in my father's kingdom can hear this case. Nobody in my father's kingdom can help you. Absalom for God that David has been reigning and ruling all through before he, even, he was even born. My friends, let's honor authority. He did this for four years. And I think David was very patient. Because of the anointing, David had the fruit of the spirit. He had patience. He waited for his son and persevered his son for four years. Can you persevere? That person was betraying you. David had the patience. And remember this was his, house, it was his son. In verse number 16, the king and all his household set out. Patient was over. And David decided to leave Absalom because of his life. He decided to run away because of his life. And number 16 says that. Give us number 16, media. David begged God to spare the child. He went without no. Second Samuel, chapter 15. Chapter 15, verse number 16. So the king and all his household, and all his who? His house. What was his household? It was the children and the wife. And you remember, David had ten concubines. So the king and all his household set out at once. He left no one except who? The concubines. This morning, if you are a concubine, my prayer is you pack and go because you have no place in that home. When I see few he left the ten concubines. He never went with, all, with any. He only took his wives and the children. And they set up. Verse number 31. Media, verse 31. When someone told David that his advisor, Ahithophel, was now backing Absalom, David prayed, O oh Lord, let Ahithophel give Absalom foolish advice because David knew that this man was able, Ahithophel was able to give Absalom an advice that could finish him an advice that could also finish who? Absalom. Are we together? Give us chapter 16 2 Samuel chapter 16 Give us number 5 as David, as King David came to Bahurim, a man came out of the village cursing them. It was Shimei, son of Gera, from the same clan as Saul's family. When David was the king in Jerusalem, he didn't know anybody by the name of Shimei. And I want to bring to attention this morning. That there are people who are known as Sheme in your life. That you never know about them when you are, when you are doing good. But the time that you are going down, Shimei's will wake up. In your life, there are Sheme. Sheme was nowhere to be seen or heard when David was in power. Shimei's are many that celebrate our downfall. Do not fight somebody who is down. Do not fight somebody who is down. She may wants you to fight yesterday's battles. So she may came, cast David, threw stone as David, even dust at David. Remember, this was the empowerment of his son Absalom. And these people had no respect for David. In verse number 9 to 14, you read at your own time, David and his men rested. They went, and somebody by the name of Basilai gave them a rest. He fed them up to the time David thought he can go back to Jerusalem where he belonged. In verse 21, Ahithophel advises Absalom. And Ahithophel tells Absalom, for you to 
To make your father to be angry, let me give you an advice. You go and sleep with all the ten concubines your father left in Jerusalem. You see the advice of Ahithophel? So, de, so, so Absalom hearkened unto the advice of Ahithophel. And he, he was told, no, not in the house, at the rooftop where everybody can see you. No, na shetan hana aibu. Eh, shetan hana aibu. So what Absalom did, he went and made a place where everybody can watch. And he slept with the ten concubines. Bana sifuwe sana. David arrives in Mahanaim in Gilead. And Basilai ministered to him. And he's, remember David is a king. Running away from his son. In 2 Samuel 18 verse 9. We learn about the death of Absalom. The sad death of Absalom. 2 Samuel chapter number 18. Media please give us 2 Samuel Verse number nine, during the battle, Absalom happened to come upon some of David's men. He tried to escape on his mule, but as he rode beneath the thick branches of a great tree, his hair caught, got caught in the tree. His mule kept going and left him dangling in the air. Imagine Absalom hanging on a tree, forsaken by the heaven and the earth. Imagine, umekataliwa na bingu na dunia. Una ninginia katikati. Because of disrespecting, disrespecting the authority of your father. Nothing can preserve men from misery and contempt, but heavenly wisdom and the grace of God. Absalom had no grace of God. Absalom had no wisdom. Adi ninginia Jui memukata na jini memukata hapo katikati. Chapter number 19, David returns to Jerusalem because this is where he belonged. Pana asifiwe, do you belong? Friends, David remembered that I belong to Jerusalem. I don't belong to Mahanaim. I belong to Jerusalem. Do you belong? Wewe kwenye ni wapi? And you know, friends, before I go to the boundaries, I was telling the Lord this morning, people make business between Kenya and Tanzania. Kenyans, they make business Kenya and Tanzania. Kenya and the U.S. But you cannot belong in two nations. You're either for Kenya or for Uganda. But in the kingdom of God, you don't have business. So you belong to one place. You only belong to where? To the kingdom of God. In the physical in this world, you can make business. You can be a businessman. Yes, an, an, an international businessman. You make business between Kenya and the other world. But in the kingdom, we have no business people in the kingdom. You better belong to Jerusalem. In the book of First Kings, First Kings, now David has gone back to Jerusalem. In the book of 1 Kings, chapter number 2. As the time of King David's death approached, he gave this charge to his son Solomon. Verse 2. I'm going where everyone on earth must someday go. Take courage and be a man. Verse 3. Observe the requirements of the Lord your God and follow all his ways. Keep the decrees, commands, decrees, commands, regulations, and laws written in the law of Moses so that you'll be successful in all you do and wherever you go. Verse 4. If you do this, then the Lord will keep the promise he made to me. He told me, if your descendants live as they should and follow me faithfully with all their heart and soul, one of them will always sit on the throne of Israel. Number five. And there, and there is something else. You know, you know what Joab, son of Zeruiah, please hold there. Joab, when Absalom, alikuwa na ninginia, wakati dunia ili mkatana bingu, 
And a, message was told, and a messenger told Joab, Absalom is hanging somewhere. And Joab asked, is he still alive? And the messenger said, yes. So what Joab did, he went and cut the neck of Absalom. So he's the one who did what? He's the one who killed Absalom. You know what Job, son of Zeruiah, did to me when he murdered my two army commanders, Abner, son of Na, and Amasa, son of Jether. He presented that it was an act of war, but it was done in a time of peace, staining his belt and sandals with innocent blood. Number, five, number six, do this. Do with him what you think best, but don't let him grow old and go to his grave in peace. Now this is David telling his son. Number seven, be kind to the sons of Basilai. These are the people who took care of David when he ran away from his son. Basilai of Gilead. Make them permanent guests at your table for they took care of me when I fled from your brother Absalom. Number eight, and remember Shimei. Shimei was the one who was casting stones at who? At David when he was running away. And remember Shimei, son of Gera, the man from Bahurim in Benjamin. He cast me with a terrible curse as I was fleeing to Mahanaim. When he came down to meet me at the Jordan River, he swore by the Lord that I will not kill him. Therefore, David gave charge to Solomon about two people. Because these people are a threat to your life as they were to me. These dying castles councils concerning Joab and Shimei did come from personal anger, no. But for the security of Solomon's throne, Joab, in 2 Samuel 18, 14, killed Absalom. Time does not wear out the guilty of any sin. Particularly murder. And Shimei, hold him not guiltless. Do not think any true, do not think him any true friend to you or your government or fit to be trusted. That is Shimei. That in 2 Samuel 16, verse number 13, he cast David, threw stones at him, and cast dust. Give us number 30, verse number 36. 2 Samuel, verse number 36. Verse number 36. 2 Samuel chapter 16, the same chapter, verse number 36. So, so this first Kings, it, it is first Kings chapter 2. The king then sent for, no, this is Solomon. The king then sent for Shimei and told him, build a house here in Jerusalem and live there. But don't step outside the city to go anywhere else. 37, on the day you, you so much as cross the Kidron Valley, you will surely die and your blood will be on your own head. 38. She may replied, your sentence is fair. Your sentence is? It is fair. As it was fair to you when you give your life to Jesus. It was fair. I will go. I will do whatever my Lord, the king commands. So she may lived in Jerusalem for a long time. Verse 39. But three years later, Two of Shimei's slaves ran away to King Achish, son of Maka of Gath. When Shimei learned where they were, number 40, he sandaled his donkey and went to Gath to search for what? Was he told to leave Jerusalem? When he found them, he brought them back to Jerusalem. 41. Solomon heard that Shimei had left Jerusalem. And had gone to Gath and returned. 42. So the king sent for Shimei and demanded, Didn't I make you swear? 
by the Lord and warn you not to go anywhere else or will would surely die. And you replied, the sentence is fair and I'll do as you see. 43. Then why haven't you kept your oath to the Lord and obeyed my command? 44. The king also said to Shimei, you certainly remember all the wicked things you did to my father David. May the Lord now bring that evil on your head, on your own head. 45. But may I, but may I, King Solomon, receive the Lord's blessing and may one of King David's descendants also sit on this throne in the presence of God. So the king sent for Shimei. Shimei was not supposed to leave Jerusalem. Friends, boundaries are very important. A singer sang and said that when, you, when I got born again, you took me to your kingdom and showed me the boundaries that mark your kingdom. And you told me never to cross these boundaries. Friends, we got born again. We received the salvation freely. But our part was to maintain the boundaries. But today, you are leaving Jerusalem, going to Judea, coming back. Tomorrow you are in Jerusalem. The other day you are in the other nation and coming back. The Lord is being with us this morning. Live within boundaries. Boundaries separate kingdoms. And you know there's nothing important, even in our, in our land here in Kenya, like beacons. When you, you buy a plot, buy a shamba, what you are so concerned about is a beacon. To know it's up to where. But you know in the kingdom, we don't care about boundaries. We don't care about beacons. You are here today, tomorrow in the other world. In the book of 1 Kings 2, don't, 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 don't project, I can just read because of time. In the book of 1 Kings 2, 20 to 31, Joab ran to the sacred tent of the Lord. And in the Old Testament, if you did a mess, if you killed or stole any, anything, concerning, anything for, any, for another person, you are entitled to run into the temple. And in the temple, just at the altar, there were two horns at the altar. And when you went to the altar and got hold of those two horns, nobody could get you out of that place. That means you are saved. So what Job did, Job knew that one of his friends, Adonijah, was killed. So David, Job remembered what he had done to, to, to David. He ran and caught hold of the two horns in the temple. But somebody told Solomon, that Joab is in the temple and is already holding the two horns. And he has said, I am going to die here. Solomon said, go and kill him there. Friends, whatever you confess, you possess. Joab was killed holding those two horns at the altar. Just as Solomon made a covenant with Shimei, Shimei lived in Jerusalem for only three years and forgot what they had promised for three years, she may stay in Jerusalem. He built a house. He lived a happy life. But one day, he forgot that he was living under a covenant. That he was living under a promise. He decided to go for their servants. Friends, servants are not under the law. It is you who is under the law. And the longer you stay in Jerusalem, Servants will come and go. But my prayer is live within boundaries. In the book of Proverbs 22, verse number 28, the Bible says, 22, Proverbs 22, verse 28, don't cheat your neighbor by moving the ancient boundary makers set up by previous generations. Yes, the salvation that we have now. Still the one that was with our parents. Don't cheat your neighbor. Don't remove the boundaries. If the Lord says he's holy, he's holy. Even today, he's still holy. 
David declared in Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. Because he knew. For the Lord to be my shepherd, I must keep boundaries. I must live within the boundaries. And David knew a secret. Friends, the Lord cannot be your shepherd. When, we, when, 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 when he comes, you are not there. The Lord wants you to maintain boundaries. Live within the boundaries. When I see for son. Yes, the green might be greener on the other side. Uko Judea. Uko Samaria. But you have been told to stay where? In Jerusalem. Maintain boundaries. And a good example is a cow. When a cow leaves its home, everybody is responsible to beat that cow. Are we together? Akipiga irudi kwao. And that was happening to, 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 to some of us. Wewe ulivuka mpaka, ukaenda inje. So anybody who comes across you, anakugonga. But you have come back to the kingdom with one eye. Come back to the kingdom, bleeding. You come back to the kingdom with a broken leg. Because you have done out, you have left the boundaries. My prayer is, you live within the boundaries. Proverbs 23, verse 18. The expectations and the hope of the righteous shall not be cut off. Please live in Jerusalem and maintain boundaries. When I see few, it's you who is under the law. Your money is not under the law. So money will come and go. Don't follow money. When I see few. Servants are not under the law. It is you who is under the law. When I see for son, slaves are not under the law. And whatever you have, when it goes back to the world, don't follow it. You'll have cross boundaries and you will die. When I see few, we might not know how many boundaries you have crossed and you are here this morning. But the Lord is saying, live within the boundaries. Whatever you received outside the boundaries, we definitely go back. Job 22, verse 21 up to 30. I'm going to paraphrase it. That your greatest value is not what you have, but God. God becomes your greatest value. Confine your silver and gold to the ground. She are in our midst. People that reserve is in our downfall. When I see few, somebody told Solomon that she may had left Jerusalem. I want to be to attention this morning that you've been reported that you have left the boundaries. The Lord knows that you had left the boundaries. There are reporters that told Solomon about Shemei. In Hebrews 12, verse 1, the Bible said, We've been surrounded by a crowd of witnesses. These witnesses are the people that have reported you that in one point you cross the boundaries. Shimei had unstable spirit because he had admired what was happening outside Jerusalem, forgetting that he was living on a covenant. The Bible says in the book of Acts 1-4 that tarry in Jerusalem until you receive power from above. Friends, where are you going? Everything, every good gift and perfect gift comes from the Lord. Tarry in Jerusalem. It doesn't matter how long it's going to take. Yes, you're telling me this morning, yes, years are going. Where are years going? Umeitua buwana ama umeitua uzima. Yes, years are going. Now I'm clocking 35. Aina shida, but please live within boundaries. You are, the Lord is still preparing you for that wedding. And when you are ready, he's going to open the door and usher you out for the wedding. Unaenda wapi? Unaenda wapi? A young man by the name of Sam loved the Lord so, so much. So, so much. And one day, a lady came to visit him. And these were the words. I want to seek the Lord but I don't have money to go to Catalonia. Somewhere, because he loved the Lord, and somebody who seeks the Lord gave this lady his own house. 
And this lady was in that house for three days. And finally she went back to her place. Then some months down the line, this lady came back and asked Samuel, I still need the favor. But this time, Samuel decided to be around. You can be seeking the Lord in the sitting room, and I can be sleeping in the bedroom. This lady sought for the Lord until forever. They became a husband and a wife. When I confronted this young man and asked him, what happened? This is what he told me. That is what he told me. And I told him, my brother, you did good. You denied us the cake and we denied you the gifts. And it was over. One year down the line, this lady conceived. She got a firstborn and another one. When the, 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 when the small baby was about three years, she was diagnosed with cancer. And she passed on. When she passed on, there was battle because this young man had not taken anything to the parents. So they came for the body. And there was a tug of war. The children were, they, they, he took the children to the chief and the parents took the body. But finally they went and when they were burying the lady, just at the graveside, my brother sneaked the children. And went back to where he was living. He said to the children, now a, 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 a wifeless brother with the two children, two girls. One day, when he was going to work, he was standing at the bus stop waiting for a matatu. Some collapsed and died. Friends, it might be sad for some, but remember some did not live within the boundaries. That is what happened. Now the parents came, but the lady came and took the children. The Lord wants you to live within the boundaries. It doesn't matter how long you've waited for that marriage. The Lord is saying, I am coming. Because I hate divorce. It doesn't matter how long you've been waiting that marriage for a baby. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 127, the children are heritage from the Lord. He knows you need a baby. But he's saying this morning, live within boundaries. So that when I come, I'll meet you living within the boundaries. Adam and Eve had everything that it takes to live well. But the moment they cross boundaries, when the Lord came for them, looking for them at the cool of the day to fellowship with them, they were not to be found. Because they have done what? They have crossed boundaries. That is the book of Genesis 3, 1 to 3. Still in the book of Genesis 13, verse number 5, Lord, a nephew to Abraham, crossed boundaries and desired to leave. He was given a choice. Because, friends, let me tell you, life is all about choices. And every choice in life has a consequence. Lord was given a choice. He decided to go and live near, not in Sodom, near Sodom. When I see fear, you see what happened? He left Sodom without a wife. Only his two girls. And finally, you know what happened? These girls slept with their father. Those are the consequences. Live within boundaries. Still in the book of Genesis 39, verse number 7, Potiphar's wife, she crossed her boundaries and had to sleep with Joseph. Thank God for young people like Joseph who can stand the test of time with their testimony. Still in the book of Genesis 34, verse number 1, Jacob and Leah, these people were wealthy, but they had a daughter by the name of Dina. One day, Dina, the daughter of Jacob and Leah, went to visit some of the young women who lived in the area. And out of this curiosity, she was raped because she left the comfort of her family. Friends, can we live in the comfort of our father? Yes, we may not have what it takes. 
Yes, it might be it, it, it might, the life might, might be harder in the in the kingdom. But my prayer is we've been called for an everlasting glory. Things that we see that are so good are temporal. But let's focus for the permanent ones because the Lord is coming. And you are here this morning. And I know you are here. You know, at some point you cross boundaries. We can look at you on the outside. You look okay. But inside you are hurting. Because that job that you are doing today, you know how you got it. You cross boundaries. You slept with that man because of that promotion. You bribed to get that job. But the Lord is saying this morning, live within boundaries. So that when I come, I'll meet you and do you good. It is not an event to wait upon the Lord. The Lord is saying this morning, yes, I can hear your cry, but come back. Come back and live within the boundaries that I can be your shepherd. I cannot take care of you in somebody else's kingdom, but I need you to be in my boundaries. And I showed you, when I brought you to my kingdom, I showed you, this is the demarcation. My kingdom is from here to here. The Lord is saying this morning, I'm able to restore that marriage. You know how you entered into that marriage. You know. You cross boundaries. He said to me, I'm waiting for the Lord. Friends, for how long? For how long? People say that for how long am I going to struggle with the spirit of man? For how long? Nobody knows when the Lord is coming back. Utakutu awapi. Are you here or are you there? Where do you belong? The Lord is saying this morning, live within boundaries. It doesn't matter what happened. But this morning, because you're in the kingdom, can you live within boundaries? Can you be contented with the little that you have because it is blessed? Can you be contented? The Lord is saying this morning, yes, I know what you want. But if I say that in the fullness of time, he makes everything beautiful. Can you wait for the fullness of the time of the Lord that can give you that child? He knows you have been a sort of a witch doctor. He knows it was reported. But this morning he's saying, can you live within boundaries? Can I meet you in my boundaries? Because I love you. Friends, Every choice in life has a consequence. And the Lord saying this morning, yes, I know you are hurting. In the book of Hosea, he says, come, and I'm going to heal you. After three days, I'm going to heal you. The Lord is saying this morning, live within boundaries. I'm fed up, struggling with the spirit of man. Can you live within boundaries? It's only the Lord who can change that husband. It's only the Lord who can change that, that, that wife. It's only the Lord who can change your business. Friends, our devices are so many. Ahithophel, a device Absalom, to sleep with his father's concubines. Those are the people that are advising us this morning. But the Lord is saying, he's the only advisor. Because he has good thoughts for you and good plans for you. Because he wants to give you a future and a hope. Where are you this morning? If the Lord could come today, where are you? And he knows you have crossed the boundaries. And he knows because it was reported. Because you've been surrounded by witnesses. He knows you crossed the boundaries. Today you are in bitterness because you know what you did. The Lord is saying, just come. Come to my kingdom and come and live within boundaries and I'm going to embrace you once again. The prodigal son, when he came back to his senses, he knew, I don't belong here. He went back to his father. Can you come back to your father? Can you come back to the boundaries? Because he's saying this morning, I'm ready to embrace you and I'm ready to, do, to make you a daughter and a son once again. And I'm ready to walk with you. If at all, you can live within boundaries. Don't be like Shimei. Only three years and he forgot that he was living under a covenant. Shall we pray? Come upon our bishop. Join that for us. I know 
the Lord will make a way for me. I know the Lord do make a way for me. If I live a holy life, shun the wrong and do the right, I know the Lord will make a way for me. I know the Lord will make a way for me. I know the Lord will make a way for me. If I live a holy life, shun the wrong and do the right, I know the Lord will make a way for me. Our Heavenly Father, we know you will make a way for me. You make a way for my brother. You make a way for my sister. You call us to shun the wrong. You're calling us to do the right. And dear Father, we are there at the cross. And that is a cry from our heart. That God give us the strength. Give us the ability. When every eye is closed and every head is bowed. And you are saying, that is me. Bishop, that is me. I've gone out of the boundary. The pressure was much. I lost it. But I want to come back to the fold and I want to come back to the Lord and I want to do the right thing. I want to say yes to his saving grace. I want to, to say yes to Jesus. Maybe one time you were born again and you backslid. Come back. Or maybe you are born again and you love the Lord so much. Your heart yearns for him. But you keep on falling left and right and center. You are taken by every wind that comes around. And you are saying today you want to get back to the boundary. So when every eye is closed and our heads are bowed. And you are saying that is me. If you lift up your hand and put it down I will see it and I will pray for you. Just shoot it up and shoot it down and I'll pray for you. The Lord bless you. Just put it down. Just put it down. Put it up. Put it down. Just you lift it up and put it down. Let God just see it. It is only God who knows you. Thank you for those hands that have been shot up. Heavenly Father, we come to the cross. We know the blood of Jesus. Oh yes, the blood of Jesus. It was to set us free. The blood of Jesus on the cross. It was to set me free. Let's confess it. The, the blood, blood of Even Jesus as we close our eyes on the cross. and our heads are bowed, let's confess. It was, it was to set me free. The blood of Jesus on the cross, it was to set me free. The blood of Jesus on the cross, it was to set me free. Hallelujah, it was to set me free. Minute from your heart, it was to make you free, to set you free, to deliver you, to cover you, to shield you, to protect you. The blood of Jesus. Oh, yes. It was to set me free. When our eyes are closed and our heads are bowed, I want us to confess again just before I whisper that prayer. What can wash away 
my sin nothing but the blood of Jesus let's confess it what can make me whole again nothing but the blood of Jesus oh precious is that flow that makes me white as snow no other fountain I know nothing but the blood of Jesus our heavenly father we have confessed that the blood of Jesus was to set us free. We have also confessed nothing can make us whole again. Only the blood of Jesus. And therefore, Father, every heart that went up, dear Father, they were confessing that here, the, here I am and you saw it. Lord God, therefore, I pray that you cleanse us. You renew our faith and you place us in the boundary so that we can live a Christian life that will be stronger, that will be powerful in this life. Therefore, Lord, we give you thanks and we give you praise. Because you are a God and beside you, there is none other. Receive your cleansing, receive your forgiveness, receive your restoration in Jesus' name. Let's make some noise in the house and praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Have you lifted up your hand and you want help? The ministry team will be ready. If you pick one of them, they can walk with you. We can take you to a class that you can walk with you because God has, God wants to, you know, he, he wants, you remember the song that the preacher started singing? Kuna bingu. Hebu tuende buwana. Kuzabu kristo nakuja, tuwe tayari kwenda Let's appreciate the speaker again and, 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 and thank God. Hallelujah.